تذكر يا أخي يوم التنادي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم The Ulama Often heard about in the world of Islam are the Ulama And for those who don't know, the Ulama, commonly referred to as Mullahs, are the religious scholars of the Muslim world Historically, the ulama have served as guides for the Muslims in better understanding and practicing their faith. And although there is a rich tradition of brilliant scholarship within the history of Islam, today's ulama are an altogether different breed. The news has become full of their latest works. Lately, here are some of the ways the so-called ulama have misrepresented the faith of Islam. They arrested a middle-aged guest school teacher over what her students named a teddy bear. They've declared that soccer is forbidden unless being used as a training activity for jihad. They then changed the goals and rules of soccer as they somehow represented the values of the West. They issued a fatwa to kill the Pope. A top Egyptian cleric issued a fatwa declaring it okay for Muslims to sell alcohol to non-Muslims. They've issued several fatwas punishing rape victims for being raped, letting the rapists go free. Pakistan even passed a legal ordinance stating that a woman must have four witnesses to prove that she was raped, or she herself will be punished for bringing the charge. A complete mockery and shameful, hateful image has been made of the true essence of Islam, to the point where it is nearly impossible to preach the true message of Islam to a non-Muslim who has not already been jaded and put off by these brutal and backwards misrepresentations. Illustrating their warped mentality and lack of true spiritual guidance, recently the ulama even actually issued a fatwa against Mickey Mouse. And if not ridiculous fatwas, the ulama have consistently shown corruption and ruling according to political influence. They have shown fanatical and terroristic tendencies and incited the masses to rebellion and chaos, which is clearly forbidden in the religion of Islam. The ulama and their fanatic hordes have proceeded to make a mockery of the religion of Islam exactly as it was foretold by the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. As narrated by Hazrat Ali, the Holy Prophet Muhammad said, A time will come in the near future when there will be nothing left of Islam except its name, and there will be nothing left of the Quran except its words. The mosque of that age will apparently be full of people, but will be empty of righteousness. The ulama will be the worst creatures under the canopy of heaven. Conflict will rise from them and will come back to them. The fact is, the Holy Prophet of Islam himself declared that the true essence of Islam would be missing specifically from its religious scholars in these days. He went as far as to call them the worst creatures under the canopy of heaven and predicted that they would create great conflict that would have great repercussions for the Muslim world. The perfect Prophet وسلم, also said, there will be nothing left of knowledge. People will make the ignorant their leaders and will seek guidance from them in matters of religion. These leaders will issue fatwas without any knowledge. They will themselves be misguided and will lead others astray. Throughout history, the ulama have had a tendency to try and monopolize all understanding regarding the faith. But this is not the true spirit of Islam, which instead has always encouraged all Muslims of all ages to fully understand and practice their faith. The history of Islam even shows that housewives were so learned in hadith and sharia that they would often correct the ulama. But those days are gone. Before we give up our decision-making to others, we should also understand 
that throughout the ages, the ulama have generally been at odds with Islam's great saints, scholars, and mujadid, or promised reformers. One of the first was Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, who lived between 780 and 855 AD. Ibn Hanbal is one of the four most famous scholars of fiqh, or Islamic jurisprudence and was also a master of hadith, having studied under Imam Shafi. It was only after 40 years of study and contemplation that Imam bin Hanbal felt himself fit to be called a religious expert. His humility, credentials, and knowledge did not keep the ulama, however, from turning against him. Because he would not proclaim the then common belief that the Holy Quran was a creation like the rest of Allah's creatures, he was arrested imprisoned, chained, and tortured. With the passage of time, Imam bin Hanbal has become revered as one of the greatest scholars of Islam and has had one of the four major schools of fiqh named after him. Imam Bukhari Imam Bukhari hardly needs an introduction. His compilation of hadith is considered the most scholarly and authentic work in Islam and is considered the greatest book after only the Holy Quran itself. Many stories are recorded about his piety and his dedication to the cause of Allah and charity. But even Imam Bukhari did not escape the opposition of the ulama and the mischief makers of his day. He was opposed and reviled by many of the ulama of the time and was even exiled from his homeland of Bukhara and died in exile. Imam al-Ghazali, a Shafi legal jurist, physician, scientist, psychologist, and the most famous critic of Greek rationalistic philosophy. For centuries his books have been read, studied, and acclaimed worldwide by Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Considered the most influential Muslim scholar in world history, and by many considered the mujadid or spiritual reformer of Islam for the 5th century, Imam al-Ghazali had his run-ins with the ulama as well. Here is what he thought of the ulama of his day. Satan has overpowered most of the ulama. Their transgressions have led them astray. Every one of them is so obsessed with his material advantage that for them a virtue becomes evil and an evil becomes a virtue. Religious knowledge has disappeared and the lighthouses of guidance have fallen. This state of affairs was tragic to Imam al-Ghazali because he knew the ultimate importance of the ulama in leading and providing an example for the Muslim masses. In this way, he knew that the ulama could either be a blessing or a curse, depending on their spiritual status and their true understanding and behavior. Oh, oh, oh.